In this video, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade a B450 motherboard so it's ready for AMD Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. Hey guys, Jonathan here with TechWiz Time, where I help you save time and money when it comes to gaming and technology. And specifically in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can save money and not spend a crap ton on an X570 motherboard and instead going for something like a B450 motherboard. Now the AMD Ryzen 3000 series has been out for a while, but some of the older motherboards, the B451s, are still only Ryzen 2000 ready. So, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can upgrade your BIOS so you can accept the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. So one thing to note, by opting for a B450 motherboard, you're not gonna be getting the X570 features. So the primary one is gonna be PCIe 4, but for those that don't really need that, then B450 is perfect. So when you're purchasing a B450 motherboard, there's really five options that you can go with to be ready for AMD Ryzen 3000. Number one is to get a B450 motherboard that is Ryzen 3000 compatible. Now there are a few out there already that have already updated their BIOSes, so they're ready to go straight out of the box. So you don't need to worry about going through this process at all. Number two is to buy a motherboard with the BIOS flashback feature, which means that you don't need a CPU, graphics card, or RAM installed. You just simply plug a USB stick with the firmware, or the BIOS, sorry, into the back of the motherboard, press a button, and wait for it to update, and that's as simple as it gets. So number three is to ask the shop where you're buying the motherboard from if they can flash the BIOS for you, because they're gonna have CPUs on hand that are gonna be able to do that anyway. So by asking them, they might do it for free or they might charge you a little bit like 20 bucks or something like that. So that's another option. So number four is to get a short-term loan from AMD directly from their support page. Now AMD recognized that their older B450 and X470 and all that sort of thing weren't compatible with the new AM4 Ryzen 3000 series. So they started offering a loan of CPU so you could upgrade the BIOS manually. So you would still need to follow along with this tutorial, this how-to, but at least you wouldn't have to go out there and buy one for yourself, which is option number five. And that's purchasing a really cheap AMD CPU like the Athlon 200GE. It goes for around $50 on Amazon. So using this in the short term just to upgrade your BIOS is potentially an option. And what you can do afterwards is you can resell it and you know you might be able to resell it for $35, $40 and get a little bit of that money back. All right, so enough of the explainer video, let's get on with what we're gonna be doing in this video. And in particular, we're gonna be using the Gigabyte B450M gaming motherboard, and we're gonna be updating the BIOS on that to be ready for AMD Ryzen 3000 CPUs. So I'm gonna be using the 2400G CPU with this one so we can upgrade it. And the method that I'm gonna use is gonna be similar whether using ASRock, Asus, MSI, or Gigabyte, doesn't matter. But I will explain in the BIOS where to go for the different types of motherboards. All right, so the first thing you'll need to do is check the motherboard page. And in my instance, it's the Gigabyte B450M Gaming. So what we'd do is we'd type that into Google, simply Gigabyte, the manufacturer, the model number, which is B450M Gaming. And with any luck, it should pop up in the first three results. And you'll see here that this is the B450M Gaming page. So we'll click on that. And once it loads, we'll go to the support section. Now I've checked on the other manufacturer's pages and support seems to be the common theme there to click on. So next what we'll need to do is we'll need to scroll down to the BIOS section and we'll need to take note of the very latest BIOS. And you'll see over in the notes section in red that there's a little note there saying that we need to upgrade to F40 before proceeding with any further BIOS updates. So if you've already had a chance to boot up your motherboard, in the BIOS it will tell you what BIOS version you are at. So if you haven't hit F40 yet, then you would need to download F40 first and then any subsequent BIOS updates after that. But luckily in my case, they've gone to a new version number, which is F50. So I won't need to worry about uploading, uploading, <laughs> upgrading to a different BIOS. I can go straight to F50 and I'm done. So for my case, I'm gonna be downloading F50 right now. So once that's downloaded, you'll need to extract it to a folder using the Windows Zip <sighs> tool or using 7-Zip, which is my preferred, preferred compression tool. Once that's extracted, you'll need to copy those files to a FAT32 USB stick. Now, the reason why it needs to be FAT32, if it's formatted in NTFS, that's a Windows format. So the BIOS won't actually recognize anything that is on the USB stick. So it definitely needs to be FAT32. So you can check that out by right-clicking on the USB stick and checking out your properties. So once that's done, we can eject it from the PC and we'll go over to our test bench and we'll plug it in there. Now, in order for this to work, you'll need to have your CPU, your RAM, 
your GPU if that's needed, and also a hard drive is optional, unless you're gonna be installing Windows straight after this. So once that's put all together, you'll need at least a keyboard, if not a mouse as well, and a monitor, and obviously the USB stick. Once they're all plugged in, ready to go, power it on, and as soon as you see the manufacturer logo pop up, start mashing that delete key. If you do miss it, it will come up with reboot and select proper boot device. So you can just reset by pressing Control alt delete or the reset button on the case. So for Gigabyte, once you're into the BIOS or UEFI, you'll need to arrow down until you get to QFlash. ASRock users will find it under the tool menu and under Instant Flash. MSI users will find it under MFlash and Asus users can go to the tool menu and go to Asus Easy Flash Utility. Whew, I think I've covered most of them. All right, so back to Gigabyte. Once we've got into the QFlash screen, you'll see this screen here. Now you can perform a backup or you can go straight to update BIOS by just hitting the enter key. This should bring up the file selection screen. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to arrow up, in my case, to the file that's there and press enter on it. This will populate the field down the bottom and then we just need to press enter again. Now before it goes any further, it's gonna verify that the file is not corrupt or damaged in any way. Then you should get to the press start screen. And now for the moment of truth, you'll press enter and it will start flashing the BIOS. So one thing to note here is to be prepared to wait for about five to 10 minutes. It is a long process and it will take a little while. So just make sure you don't touch anything with the computer. Make sure that there's no interruptions to power. And also if you wanna be really, really safe before you even do this, make sure that the computer is plugged straight into the wall and not into any sort of power pack. So after that five to 10 minutes, it should come back saying it's been completed successfully and it's gonna do a reboot. And believe it or not, it's as simple as that, you're done. So flashing a BIOS isn't that difficult, but it is a dangerous task because if you do anything wrong or if there's any sort of interruption to the flashing process, then it could corrupt the BIOS, which means that the motherboard can't be used at all. Some motherboards have features like dual BIOSes and so forth, which means that you can get out of any trouble if anything does happen. However, most of them are just single BIOSes. So if you do have an issue, it could damage your motherboard, Why? which is why I should say, that this process is, it's a little bit, what's the word, dangerous. But if you take the proper precautions and you take your time and you don't rush things, then it should be a fairly simple and straightforward process. So if you've got any questions or anything like that, make sure you leave it down in the comments below and I'll see if I can get to answering your questions, especially if it's to do with say the Gigabyte motherboard, I might have a little bit of insight there for you. If you wanna help this channel to grow, then there's three things that you can do for me. One of them is to hit the subscribe button and also the bell notification icon. Number two is to share this video on social media platforms like Facebook, Reddit, or Twitter. And the third way is to make a small monthly contribution to our Patreon campaign. I wanna say a huge thanks to everyone that's watching this video and gotten this fast. I really, really appreciate it. And as always, imagine, learn, create.